justice investigation, the more this question gets asked, can and will he indict a sitting president? Various legal scholars have argued why Mueller won't indict Donald Trump. One, Paul Rosenzweig, who was senior counsel for the investigation of President Clinton back in the 90s, says Mueller will not indict Trump for obstruction of justice or for any other crime. He won't do it for the good and sufficient reason that the Department of Justice has a long-standing legal opinion that sitting presidents may not be indicted. But today, Politico reports that at least two attorneys they describe as, quote, working with clients swept up in the Russia probe and who have interacted with the special counsel's team say that they think it is possible that Mueller could indict the president for obstruction of justice. Quote, if I were a betting man, I'd bet against the president, said one of the lawyers. The second attorney, who represents a senior Trump official, speculated that Mueller could try to bring an indictment against Trump, if only to demonstrate the gravity of his findings. It's entirely possible that Mueller may go that route on the theory that as an open question, it should be for the courts to decide, the attorney said. Even if the indictment is dismissed, it puts maximum pressure on Congress to treat this with the independence and intellectual honesty that it will never, ever get. Joining us now is the reporter who wrote that piece, Daryl Sa Darren Samuelson, senior reporter for Politico, and back with us is Paul Butler. So um, let's talk a little bit about that reporting um, that you did, Darren. Um, according to your piece, uh, both of the lawyers that you spoke with based their opinions on their understanding of the law. One also cited his interactions with the special counsel's team, whose interviews have recently examined whether Trump tried to derail the probe into his campaign's Russia ties. Did you take that to mean that these lawyers believe that Mueller can indict or that he will indict? I think it means that they can uh, indict if they want to. And as they've been reading the tea leaves, as they see the stories that are published out there by all the media outlets that are covering this, they take their own uh, interactions with the special counsel as well into account. Uh, they're not ruling it out. I know that the legal scholars out there would argue that a president can't be indicted while they're sitting in office, but there is certainly a lot of debate about that. And these lawyers at this point in time are not ruling it out. One even went so far as to say it's possible in the spring of this year. Wow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, it, it, wow. OK, well, let, let's talk about that, that question. I know where you stand on this a little bit, Paul Butler, but I'm going to I'm going to do a little a little uh, exercise with you here. Let's listen to Ken Starr and Ken Starr. So this is Ken Starr um, arguing. I mean, Ronald Rotunda, sorry, Ronald Rotunda, um, who's arguing that Ken Starr actually could indict Bill Clinton back during uh, the Monica Lewinsky affair. Take a listen. Oh, it's full screen. Sorry. It is proper constitutional and legal for a federal grand jury to indict a sitting president. This is Mr. Rotunda says for serious criminal acts that are not part of and are contrary to the president's official duties. Star legal stars legal advisor Ronald Rotunda concluded in a 1998 memo first made public last summer through an open records open records request by The New York Times. In this country, no one, even President Clinton, is above the law. So that was a memo from 1998. Now, what Ronald Rotunda says is he thinks that there's a difference. He says nothing in the Constitution would bar a federal grand jury from returning charges against a sitting president for committing a serious felony. But, and this is a big but, differences between the Clinton situation then and the investigation of President Trump now mean that where Starr had the authority to indict Clinton if he chose, Mueller most likely does not possess the same power. That's Give us sort of both sides of the argument, the argument that he can do it and the argument that he can't, and which is stronger. So the Constitution does have a contemplate that the president might commit a high crime or a misdemeanor, but the text spells out the remedy, which is impeachment, meaning that the House charges him with the crime and the Senate, if convicted, uh, then removes him from office. At that point, after impeachment and conviction, uh, the text of the Constitution suggests then he could be indicted, but not before. It's an open question. There's also a legislative issue with regard to uh, special counsel Mueller, who is, unlike Ken Starr, not an independent counsel. So Mueller actually has a boss, Rod Rosenstein, which mm -hmm. again is why the Nunes memo and the pretext that the president might use to fire uh, Rosenstein, that's why it's so important, because he's right. the boss. He's not, Mueller is not independent. Mm -hmm. And the Justice Department regulations, mm -hmm. which Mueller and Rosenstein work with them both, they're like Boy Scouts. They love rules. They like to follow rules, which our country desperately needs at this moment. Right. But the Justice Department rules suggest that in their view, a sitting president cannot be indicted. Right. And so, so Darren, you know, in your piece, you also uh, spoke to Adam Schiff, uh, who, 
who is the ranking member on the House Intelligence Committee, Democrat, and he says, this is what he told you. I think it's far more likely uh, that if the special counsel finds evidence of criminality, that it's presented in a report to Congress. This is Adam Schiff talking. Schiff said Mueller would likely have steep reservations about the notion that 12 jurors in some part of the country should decide the fate of the republic. In addition, Schiff said that a federal judge might stay any criminal proceedings until after Trump's presidency. When, when you spoke with um, Adam Schiff, obviously he didn't seem think, think it was likely. Did you get the sense that perhaps these lawyers are saying that and sort of floating this idea that there could be an indictment of the president really for their own interests of their clients as a way to sort of create leverage for themselves? I didn't take it that way, no. I know a lot of people have speculated that that is what the lawyers were trying to get across, that they were trying to send a message uh, to President Trump, look, this is uh, coming at you really fast, you might want to act. But the impression that I got was more that uh, they see Congress as not acting, and Mueller uh, seeing that, uh, that the presentation would not be something that would lead to impeachment, then Mueller might want to put his cards on the table and do it in front of a court, let the court decide. Obviously, it would go very quickly, I'm sure, to the Supreme Court, and we would get a landmark U.S. versus Trump decision on whether or not a sitting president can be indicted. This has never been argued before the Supreme Court. We've seen a lot of other cases involving presidents and the power around them in the Nixon era and in the Clinton era that set some precedent, but not on this question. It's pretty key as well to think about the fact that the prosecutors, as you pointed out, Ron Rotunda and Ken Starr in the Clinton uh, approach, they did consider uh, indictment. Same thing in Watergate. They were looking at indictment. They thought that they could, the prosecutors could indict Richard Nixon, but they ultimately did go the route of impeachment because that is what the House of Representatives was going to be doing. They shared their information with them, and that ultimately led to the impeachment uh, proceedings that led to Richard Nixon's resignation yeah. and, of course, in Clinton as well. Absolutely. I mean, that is the point, right? During the Nixon era, there was the belief among the Watergate prosecutors that they could indict Nixon. The last question I would, uh, I would throw to you then, because this is the other question a lot of people wonder, could Trump try to pardon himself? Well, that's exactly right. So that's a concern that some people have said is why the president couldn't be indicted, because then he could charge, then he could just turn around and pardon himself. That would be clearly obstruction of justice and abuse of power, abuse of office. So further grounds for impeachment. So once again, we're looking to the Congress to fulfill its constitutional responsibilities, which is to rein the president in. I'm not sure people feel too hopeful if that is the remedy. Uh, we're looking to Congress. Darren Samuelson, thank you very much.